Hey guys, it's Rishi once again. Welcome to our channel where we explore the fascinating world of 11 plus reasoning for analogies. In this series, we delve into the art of making connections and drawing logical relationships between words and concepts. Join us as we unravel the secrets behind analogies and equip you with the skills to tackle these challenging questions. So get ready to enhance your critical thinking and reasoning abilities. Marvellous. So what are analogies? Well, to solve the question, you have to look at the relationship between two things. They could be words, they could be shapes. Now, when we're comparing these two things, there is a relationship that they share. So for example, solid is to liquid as sour is to sweet because the relationship is based on the fact that they are opposites. But in today's video, we're doing it a little bit different. We're working with shapes here. So make sure that you read all of the questions carefully and let's go through the example in front of us. So which one of the figures in the boxes on the right completes the analogy? We can see that the shape is not changing. So we're looking for a star. The only thing that is different is that the white center in the circle has been changed to gray. So we want a star that has been changed from white to gray. Another way to think about analogies is to say aloud what you see, just the way I'm doing now. So white circle is to gray circle, as white star is to gray star. So with that being said, our answer would be C. So let's dive into the first question. So what do we notice here? Well, instantly we can see that the first figure is a mirror image of the second figure. So that's your mirror image. So for shape three, we need to look for the arrow that is facing the shape. Again, we can eliminate D as there's no shape, there's just two arrows. And we can eliminate C as it's not pointing to the shape. So this could be box A or box B. But you should have also noticed the diagonal lines pointing down and to the right. But if we look closely, what do we notice about the lines here? Well, what we can notice here is that the diagonal lines are pointing down and to the right. So we're looking for diagonals pointing up and to the left. And that there gives us B. So as you can see, we're pointing up and to the left, up and to the left, down and to the right, down and to the right. Marvellous. Okay, let's go for question number two here. So firstly, the examples are reverse images with a vertical reflection. So that's coming down here. So straight away, B, C, and D all satisfy that rule, so we can eliminate A. But now let's take a look at the four kinds of shading that is found in the first figure. Now, we know that is also found in the second figure, but with our question, we have horizontal lines, as you can see here. These are all our horizontal lines. We have diagonal bricks, diagonal lines, and dots. So which shape? has four of these shading styles. Have you found it yet? Only C has the four shading styles. That's again, your horizontal lines. We've got our diagonal brickwork. We've got diagonal lines and we've got our dots. Marvelous work. Again, remember, we're looking for attention to detail here. So if you need to pause the video, please do so and then press play when you're ready to go. Okay, let's go for question four. So which one of the figures in the box on the right completes the analogy? So let's compare one and two first. So if you look, the two shapes need to be like a jigsaw. So they need to come together. And they have to fit together. So now if we go ahead and look at shape three, we can straight away eliminate B as B has a point to the top. So that certainly won't fit in. Again, we can see that C has a little bit of a dip here, so that can be eliminated. 
And if we look at D, it doesn't have a straight drop. It's got a, a slight drop and then a curve coming outwards. So A works. And that there is our answer. Brilliant. Question five. So again, let's go ahead and compare one and two. Well, we know that figure one swaps dotted lines for solid lines. So that's the first one. And the solid lines for the dotted lines. And that's the second. So if we take a look at box B, C and D, they all do this. Where the checked X shape becomes gray and the gray double triangle shape becomes checked. However, we see in the original that the small triangle is turned upside down. So which box contains the right shading and an upside down smiley face? So again, we can see both B and D have the upside down smiley face. But B has moved the smiley face to the bottom. So it cannot be the right answer. So our answer is D. Beautiful. Okay, let's go over to question six. So what do we notice here? Well, looking at the circle and square figures, you should notice that the outlines have reversed. Where the circle had a black shading, it now has a gray shading. And where the square had a gray shading, it now has a black shading. So the shading inside both shapes is also reversed. As you can see, the gray becomes the black and the black becomes the gray. And finally, the circle moves from behind the square to being in front of it. So looking now at the triangle and the heart figure, what do you see? Well, we need to see reversed outlines, reversed shadings, and switch from front to back. So again, we can eliminate C because the triangle should be at the front. And we can eliminate B because the triangle has to move from a black to a gray shape. So what could it be? Well, if you take a look at the shading here, A is also eliminated because the diagonal shaping has not changed. So for that reason, D is our answer. You're doing re really well for coming this far, so let's keep it up. Okay, team, let's go on to the next question. So, how do we get from figure one to figure two? Well, straight away, what do we see? That you should make the dotted lines, which are always inside these triangles, into solid lines. So where we had three dotted lines in the triangles, we now have three solid lines in the triangles. And where the solid lines in the square now become dotted lines in the square. So what are we going to do for figure three? Well, as you can see here, that we're now going to change all of the dotted lines in the triangles to solids. And remember, they have to be in an opposite direction. So instantly, we can go ahead and eliminate A, and we can eliminate D, because they are not in the opposite direction. So it's out of B and C. But again, let's take a look at the way the lines are being presented. Well, if you take a look at the horizontal shading, they are always inside the circles. And they're into vertical shadings. So now when they vertically flip the figure, we can see that C is the only answer that gives us this. So remember that was with the horizontal shading, which were always inside the circles into the vertical shading. Marvelous. Okay, we're almost at the end now. So let's keep it up, team. Question seven. So which one of these figures in the boxes on the right completes the analogy? Let's take a look at figure one to two. So to get from figure one to figure two, you must change the rounded square into a triangle and replace all gray shadings with white. So to get from figure three to the answer, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to change the rectangle to a triangle. So straight away, eliminate B and D. And we're going to change all the gray shading to white, which means C is our answer. And that there is how we do it. I hope you're getting a hang of this. So don't give up and let's keep going to question number eight. So to get from figure one to figure two, we moved the square outside the star to inside the star. So you can see it's now pointing inside. Did you notice a change from the number nine to the number 27? So again, you can see how that works. 
And that was a change of multiplying it by three. So figure three, what does it become? Well, we know 14 times three is 42, so we can eliminate D and A. Well, we know the answer is going to be B because the cross has to be inside the flag. Marvelous. Okay, over to question nine. Straight away, what do we notice about figure one and two? Well, we can see if we flip the larger shape horizontally and change the gray shading to the white shading, we'll get from figure one to figure two. So when we're flipping figure three, what should happen to the triangle? Well, the triangle should flip two, which means that makes shape B incorrect. And then if you take a look at the shading, A has the incorrect shading and D has the wrong L shape. So the answer is C. Don't forget as well to pause the video, attempt the question and then press play to see the answer. Okay, let's go to our final question team. So what do you notice about figure one and two? Okay, we can see that the shapes have swapped. And then for the shape now on the right, we horizontally flip it and change it from the gray shading to the white shading. So as you can see, this ring was white, but now it's gray. But the shape on the left stays unchanged. So just for the really clever, we also added in some numbers. So figure one has 16, but it divides it by four. So the rule is divide by four. So you should look for a box with a three in it because 12 divided by four is three. So instantly we eliminate D and C. So remember the left shape should be unchanged. So for that reason, we eliminate B as that's got a little rectangle in the middle and A is now our answer. Brilliant work. And that concludes our journey into the realm 11 plus reasoning analogies. We hope you found this video useful and insightful. So remember, when approaching analogies, look for relationships and patterns between words and shapes. If you found this video useful, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more enriching content on 11 plus preparation. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.